and there were zero naked boys in it, so I felt kind of let down. Happening Palooza Party, it's your girl Gigi, and you are watching Anime Palooza. Today it's time for another episode of Anime R and R. This is the show where I talk about all the anime that I've watched, all the manga that I've read in a certain period of time. This time about a month, <laughs> um, and let you know what I thought about it. If it sucked, if it's great, if it's good, if you should go out and binge it right now, or if you should just toss it out the window. Like I want to do the, the sun that is like 80 degrees in my face. I have a huge video for you guys today, and I've completed a lot of stuff. I'm very very surprised at myself honestly and also I have my first impressions for the stuff that I'm watching for the spring season which isn't a lot but you know whatever let's just get started let's get our anime on nothing else to say let's all move along here except you guys know I like to start with my manga first and there's a lot of it so the first thing that I read is missions of love volume one missions of love is a Kodansha title and this is one of the ones that I bought to try out just to see if I thought it was gonna like it or not um, I love it. Spoiler alert, I love it. Um, I really like the art style in this manga. It's very cutesy, but like it's got a little bit of sex appeal in there too, so I really like what's going on there. Missions of Love is a story about a girl in high school who writes cell phone novels, which basically means she writes like you know, fan fiction that people pick up over an app or whatever. But she's never been in love before, so she wants to write a love story but doesn't know how to write a love story. So she basically bribes this dude in her class to do stuff with her, like to hold her hand and to give her a hug, to be her boyfriend, all that kind of stuff. It's very kind of sadomasochistic in a way, um, but that's the shit that I like. So it's a little bit twisted. I really like it. Um, the one thing I don't like is that it looks like they're about to insert some kind of love triangle in there, which I think it would have just been fine if they had the girl and the one guy, but whatever, beggars can't be choosers, missions of love, it's pretty shoujo trashy. 10 out of 10. Well, maybe not a 10, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I also read volume three of The Demon Prince of Momochi House. This is from Shoujo Beat, aka Viz Media. This is from Aya Shoto, who's one of my most favorite mangaka of all time because I love her art style to pieces. This is the one that reminds me of Kamisama Kiss, where the girl inherits a house and then she has like deities that she basically has to take care of. It's still good. This volume I really liked. It had a little side story about like a regular guy who is friends with the dude who's the actual you know the big the big demon in a past life so it really kind of like it was a good story in there and I hope we see that character more so really love this manga it is great you know anything that's like Kamisama Kiss I'm pretty much gonna like and this is no exception next I read Haikyuu volume 3 which still hasn't gotten past the part in the anime that I've watched and actually this volume had the end of their very first practice game I think it was a long time since I read this um, but it's Haikyuu and it's about volleyball. It's from Viz and you should pick it up because I know I said I didn't really like sports manga but now I feel like sometimes all I read is sports manga. Next up this is the first manga I've completed this year and it is Kiss of the Rose Princess. I read volumes 7 through 9. This is another shoujo beat title. Um, I believe this one is also by Aya Shoto. It's right here. Yes. It is. She's right there. I loved this manga to pieces. I have something in my eye though. Again, Aya Shoto is one of my favorite mangaka. I love her art style. And this is basically like a magical girl plus reverse harem manga all in one. Ended very nicely. She didn't really pick someone but she sort of did pick someone. I'm not gonna spoil it. Um, but I really thought that it ended in a good way minus how it got up to the ending because you guys know I don't like these endings um but if you like shoujo trashy shit this is not as romancy but it's definitely got the reverse harem aspect and it's got the magical girl aspect which I really like what happens is this girl kisses a bunch of cards and then these boys come out and do their bidding do her bidding it's really cute I rated kiss of the rose princess an 8 out of 10 I'm also back to reading Skip Beat and I read volumes 19 through 21. This portion of Skip Beat is where our main girl whose name is Kyoko, yes Kyoko, her name was escaping me for a second. Kyoko is basically running around 
ending her job on Dark Moon. Well, I, I know she's still filming it. She's running around doing double duty now. So she has Dark Moon and she has a new drama that she's working on where she has to play a bully. But before that, she throws a Christmas slash birthday party with Maria, the president of the company's granddaughter, the one who really likes her. She hates Christmas and her birthday because that's when her mom died. A whole bunch of this omnibus is them planning a party and then them having a party. And then we find out that Kyoko's birthday is on Christmas. And the gift she gets from Ren Suruga though kills me. Why aren't they together yet? This slow burn, 21 volumes, still not together yet, driving me insane. Still a skip beat though. Still a skip beat. Showed your beat from Viz if you want to go for it. Next is Twin Signal Volume 1. I got this in one of those right stuff blind box things. This is that very very tiny manga. Um, turns out there's an anime to this which I've already seen and apparently I didn't even remember it. That's how bad it was. The art style really reminds me of Tenshi Mio because the main character who is a robot like a, a human-ish robot reminds me of Ryoko. They look pretty much exactly alike. Um, it's basically a gag manga. Nothing really to write home about um, and unfortunately it's the only volume that ever got published so I'll never be able to finish it unless they track down some fan translations and it's really old so that's probably not gonna happen. It was sort of funny. It really wasn't my favorite thing I've ever read but it got me interested enough to look up the anime which of course I've already seen and now I want to see it again so and I rated the anime really low too. Hmm, who knows. All right now we're getting into the main three. Oh. It's time for it's time for Gigi shall we corner uh so I read the first volume of 10 count that happened and it wasn't very like graphic at all like I was from the hype that 10 count has I really was kind of expecting a lot more naked boys in it and there were zero naked boys in it so I felt kind of let down I've heard that volume 2 has more but I didn't get any more. I only bought volume 1 so I'll have to wait to see if 10 count lives up to its yaoi expectation. <laughs> 10 count is a boys love title where basically this one dude is a germaphobic. Doesn't want to touch things, doesn't want to touch people um, and this little psychiatrist boy is trying to get him over that. You know what's gonna happen here right? You know. But supposedly it's really good. I thought this first volume was just okay but then again nothing really happened in it except for setting up the premise. Ten Count is by Sublime which is a Viz offshoot. It's the Yaoi offshoot of Viz. <sighs> We're still in the Yaoi corner. I read Love Stage volumes 4 through 6 which is all that are out in English right now. You want to talk about graphic we can talk about Love Stage because Love Stage went there. I mean it was censored like in the manga but it's still like it went there. Um, Love Stage is a boys love title about these two boys who were in a commercial together 10 years ago except one of them dressed up like a girl. So the other guy was in love with who he thought was a girl for all his life. They meet again 10 years later and oops he's a boy. So it's the two of them struggling to come to terms with their relationship along with their sexualities in the process. I really like it personally. I know a lot of people don't but as you get towards the end of the manga it's looking way less like the reasons people didn't like it in the beginning and more like a true love story. Except then they have an amnesia volume. You guys know how I feel about amnesia plot lines. Um, and then at the very end they like mentioned something about living together and getting married and they hadn't even been together like a year or something. It's a very short amount of time they've been together and I'm just like don't. 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 But the last volume apparently has like 12 chapters or something in it like so I can't wait to have it. It's not out yet. So Love Stage again published by Sublime which is the boys love offshoot of Viz. I recommend it. I like it a lot more than 10 count but then again I've only read the first volume of 10 count. And the last manga I went through is Idle Dreams. This I think is my new favorite manga of all time. I bought all of it that's out in English. There's only three volumes. I think there's a fourth one out in Japan but it hasn't come over here yet. Idle Dreams is by Arena Tenemura. It's basically like real life, the anime real life. If the main character were a girl, uh, she goes to her high school reunion, finds the guy that she used to be in love with, some other dude who's in love with her, 
Um, and he has a pill for her that she can take to make herself go back to being 15 years old again. And she becomes an idol. So now there's like an idol boy who's in love with her. Two idol boys that are in love with her. And I love this so much. Like I love the grown up version of the main character. She's just so lame. And she doesn't even know like all these people are in love with her. And I'm like, oh, I wish that were me. <laughs> Like, I don't want to be as lame as her, but I want to be as loved as her. Does that make sense? It makes sense in my head. So I really love this. And I've never read an Arena Tenemura ma manga before, but everybody raves about her. And I can see why. The character designs are really adorable. I love the plot in this. I just, I want more of it. Hurry up. <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> Idle Dreams is from Shoujo B and Viz. Get the first three volumes. You'll love it promise. Okay, it's time to go into my backlog and streaming titles that I watched that were not seasonal. So I have a ton. Now look, do you like my fucking high school musical notebook? I'm so lame. First one is La Cordadoro Blue Sky. I watched episodes one through three. This is from Sentai. I watched it subtitled. It does not have a dub. In my pickups video, I talked a little bit about La Cordadoro Blue Sky. It's the sequel to La Cordadoro, which is a reverse harem. One of my favorite reverse harems of all time, actually. It takes place in a classical music school. Blue Sky does the same. However, there's too many characters. Like, I just I don't like any of them. I can't find a best boy because none of them really are best boy material, at least in the first three episodes. And the first date that this girl goes on is with somebody really creepy. He's like using her to fall in love so that his music will be better. And I'm like, no, girl, don't waste your time on this asshole. And it sucks. because He's like super princely to start off with. And then he turns into a total dick bag. And I was like, God. I can't. I can't. It's a sequel to La Cordadoro, but the characters in La Cordadoro basically come back for tiny little minute long cameos and that's it, which is really disappointing. So these are all new characters. It is super shoujo trashy. I don't really care for it yet, but I'm waiting for some more ridiculous things to happen. So maybe I'll like it a little bit more or maybe to just have one redeeming male character so that I can find a best boy. The Cordadora Blue Sky, did I say that, is licensed by Sentai. You can buy it. I bought mine really cheap for like 16 bucks. Next anime I watched is One Out and this is an anime that you guys recommended to me down in the comments because you said it was like Hisoka playing baseball in a psychological sports anime. You bless you bless you for introducing me to the world of one outs because one outs is fucking amazing it is basically like hisoka playing baseball in a psychological sports that's all i needed to know and that's all you really need to know there's a lot of talking not a lot of baseball playing but that's okay because it's hisoka playing baseball with his mind one outs is freaking great if you can find it you should watch it I've only seen the first three episodes because I kind of wanted to pace myself. Also, it's kind of hard to track down. One Outs is great. Oh my god. I love it so much. Needs to be licensed. Ah, thank you for suggesting it. Oh my god. <laughs> Next up, I watched episodes one through four of Gundam Wing. I know. You're like, what the fuck, Gigi? There is a story behind this in a video that's already gone up. I won't talk any more about Gundam Wing. There's a whole video about it. I did a random anime time. I only did one and the first anime that popped up was My Bride is a Mermaid. Um, I already had started My Bride is a Mermaid so I watched episode 8. I stopped watching it because it was boring as hell. I kind of stick by this during episode 8 except this one had an idol battle and it had like people singing in English so it was very kind of interesting a little bit and then like there's so many puns in there like the mermaids names are like sun and lunar and now lunar is gonna go live at the house so it's basically turning into like a harem for like this dude who has a mermaid living in his house and i'm not a huge fan of this one it is kind of old it's about 10 years old and i don't really care for it but since i started it i will finish it it just so happened that it came up on random anime time the other one i watched was the heroic legend of arslan and i watched episode one not a fan of this not a fan of this first episode i just it's not the kind of anime that i normally watch the beginning had a lot of fighting in it a lot of needless violence then it turns into a fantasy anime which i'm really not a fan of i don't 
really care for those at all. There's just too many characters. Everything is boring. Um, this is about a little boy played by Aaron Dismuke. My husband Bondo, so I should like it. Um, and he basically, you know, at the end of the episode says, oh, my dad's super fine. Like, I won't have to worry about becoming king for a really long time. And then I bet you, like, in episode two, the dad's gonna die. So he's gonna have to become king. I just, ugh. I've heard this is really great. It's just not the kind of anime that I like. So if it comes up on random anime time again, I'll watch more of it, but I don't plan on voluntarily doing so. So in my backlog, I completed a title and the next one that I working on after this completed one which I'll talk about shortly because I'm putting all the ones that I'm done with together is Natsuyuki Rendezvous. I watched episodes one through six. This is from Sentai and it does have a subtitled only release. You guys this anime is like amazing. It is amazing. You guys know I really love Jose anime. This is based at an older crowd. What it is is this girl runs a flower shop and her part-time employee is in love with her unfortunately she is a widow her husband died and his ghost kind of haunts the flower shop so it's got like a 30 year old woman and the 22 year old who's in love with her and then her dead ghost husband who keeps trying to get in the way of everything now you would think that this would be like a really funny comedy but it's not it's very serious and the things that go on with her trying to get through her grief to try to move past her husband's death and to try and let somebody else into her life they just really pull at me like a lot like I just there are moments in there that Hazuki who is the younger guy what he does and says to her because he really is in love with her they just like move me I was just like oh the stomach drop here it is the stomach drop is coming the shoujo stomach drop and all the time it does it all the time after like the first three episodes the ghost of her dead husband does start to possess Hazuki's body. This is where I'm getting a little less interested because I don't want the ghost in there. I want this to be a love story between Hazuki and the main girl and instead it's just confusing our poor main girl even more. Like I just want her to find love with Hazuki because her husband is dead. She needs to move past it. So uh, I really love this. I can't wait like to be done editing and everything and filming for the day so I can finish it today because I've watched six episodes in about two days and I love Natsuyuki Rendezvous. I can't believe I waited this long to watch it. All the rest of these I have completed. So the first one is technically a rewatch but it is a rewatch with a brand new dub. I watched all of Diabolic Lovers More Blood, the shoujo trash that started it all. Okay so I stand by the fact that I don't like more blood as much as I like the original series because I don't like the new vampires the new family of vampires um however this dub by far surpasses my wildest dreams and expectations oh my god you thought the first one was a hot trash mess this second one I'm not gonna go into it too much because we're doing a dub talk on it obviously but Diabolic Lovers More Blood in English is the absolute best thing ever go buy it just go buy it it's really cheap it's sentai i watched the whole thing in about three hours with breaks and stuff to like tweet about how amazing things were but i was just like oh, i love it so much do it okay so i finally watched defrag episodes 10 through 12 so i completed this series defrag is the anime about the game club and the end of it is basically like a tournament fighter sort of they play one final battle game which basically has two groups of people fighting against one about one another like legitimately fighting um i wasn't too interested in that but despite that the entirety of this anime remained legitimately funny like and you guys know that i'm not a big fan of comedy so for this to be actually funny was really great for me. I rated Defrag a 7.5 out of 10 and I will stick by it because the character designs are cute, the dub was really great, and it was funny, which is all that matters in a comedy because I don't think comedies are funny. Defrag is licensed by Funimation, so if you want it, there, there you go. The next anime I completed, I watched all of it, episodes 1 through 11. I watched Rampo Kitan, Game of Lapless, or Laplace as I like to say. Um, and I watched the English dub of this so I could do the dub talk episode. I will link it down below in case you want to hear all my thoughts on this amazing English dub, including J. Michael Tatum, like I've never heard him before, 
and this girl named Mallory who is now my senpai oh my god Rumble Keaton is a mystery show that is fucked up like I started watching this somebody had recommended it to me because I had just finished something fucked up probably Pet Shop of Horrors um and they were like oh you should watch this and I was like okay it looks kind of fucked up it is fucked up um it's not as, as screwed up as it could be but it's definitely something that if you like like the twisted kind of stuff the horror kind of stuff the mystery stuff you would like this except for the last arc which is a piece of shit but we won't go there um it is licensed by Funimation watch it dubbed do yourself a favor it's creepy as shit um and I gave it a 7.5 out of 10. For some reason I was really into boys love in March like it was yaoi time Gigi yaoi corner all the time so I watched the first season of the world's greatest first love, which I think is called Sekaiichi Hatsukoi. Funimation just licensed it. It's a really old anime though, um, but it doesn't have a dub. It's subtitled only, so I'm not buying it because I, I don't see the point in buying them unless you're like wanting to raise awareness for Funimation actually licensing yaoi titles. It's the same with the Beishi shows. Um, I don't know maybe I will buy it down the line but they want like 50 bucks for it and I was like I'll wait till that shit goes on sale. The World's Greatest First Love follows three couples who work at a manga publishing company and they're all guys they're all boys um, and I really was very confused because all of the characters look alike like except for one guy in the third couple the two couples look exactly the same like I was just very confused because I was like but this guy was there he's supposed to be the new guy and then he's saying he's an artist and he's not an artist he's an I was super confused once I figured out that they were three separate couples I was like okay I get this a little more the first couple is a couple who was together in high school they broke up and then they meet again at this manga publishing company and like the older wiser I guess the more adult looking one um basically is still in love with the other one and the other kid is like fuck you like I'm not doing this again um that story was pretty interesting the one in the middle was pretty much worthless it is a love triangle um and it is an artist who's in love with his manager basically no the manager's in love with him it's very confusing because like I said they all look alike um but he thinks that his best friend is in love with it's weird I thought it was boring I didn't like it at all and then the third one is the best one unfortunately it's also the one with the shortest amount of episodes about it um it is about this younger no this older guy who looks really young and he falls in love with like a 22 year old who works at a bookstore who puts out his manga that he works on that was the best one that one made the stomach drop the shoujo stomach drop happen it was super cute and he was just like I know I'm really young but you should love me and he's like I can't love anyone he's like I'm old and I was like you're not old number one and it's like number two like please get with get with him because he wants to treat you like a prince so I really liked that one unfortunately the animation is really shitty there's some censoring when there doesn't need to be um, and I just didn't really connect with two out of three of the stories that were going on. So I did rate The World's Greatest First Love the first season a five out of ten. Now this does have a second season. I don't know if the second season is any better because I haven't really started it yet. But if it has more of the third couple then I will definitely rate the second season higher but the other two I just didn't care for. And the last two anime I'm gonna lump together because they come from the same series but the OVA is listed separately. You guys I finally watched Free Eternal Summer and the OVA. Now you know I'm not the biggest fan of Free. I'll tell you why. It's because it's looking like it's supposed to be a sports anime and there's no swimming in it. Like there's no sports in it. Um, once I realized the fact that I wasn't going to get a swimming anime out of Free Eternal Summer and instead I was supposed to, I was just going to get another slice of life that's really beautifully animated, I was a little more behind this. Um, also season two got dubbed before season one so I was able to watch it in English. A lot of people have a lot of problems with the Free Eternal Summer dub and I wasn't one of them until it got to the last three or four episodes. <laughs> Um, I really liked it. I don't have a problem with writers taking creative liberties to insert like different words where they're supposed to be or whatever but 
Haru basically for the last four episodes turned into a little bitch. Like I just, and not like a good little bitch like in Diabolic Lovers, like a legitimate fucking bitch. And I just hated his characterization. I hated the way that Todd Habercorn played him. I was like, Haru is very stoic. Like he's not a little bitch. And then Rin, Reen, got into it too. And he was a little bitch. But so that's... I understand why people don't like it now. Um, however, Best Boy is Sosuke, who is a new character to Free Eternal Summer. He wasn't in the first season. Voiced by my Hisbanjo, number one, Ian Sinclair. <sighs> Sosuke. Sosuke, you guys. Sosuke. Everything I want in a man is Sosuke. I love Sosuke so much. Um, there's no merch for him, though. Like, why can't I get a Sosuke anything? Oh my god, I want to wallpaper my life in him. Um, Sosuke is a childhood friend of Rin's and I don't want to spoil it but there's something that happens where it really changes his life and his future around and I loved every second of him. Because this anime is toted as a sports anime and doesn't have very much sports in it, I rated Free Eternal Summer a 7.5 out of 10 which is a point higher than I rated the original Free. The OVA though because I knew there was going to be no sports in it whatsoever and it actually was a hysterical like fighting anime basically all it had to do was a water gun battle and had a bunch of fan service at the end and I was super happy about it um and it also had them dressed up in butler suits Sosuke was cooking in the kitchen oh my god Sosuke um so I rated that a 9 out of 10 fuck that OVA was the best shit ever <laughs> fucking love that OVA so yeah Free Eternal Summer I bought this set from Funimation and it is in my backlog um and the box is really nice Everything about the set is really nice. I really like this. So if you want to get the collector's edition, I would suggest it. The, like I said, I thought the dub was okay up until about episode 9. So I watched it dubbed. I don't know when I'm going to get the chance to watch it in subtitled, um, but I do know that the first season is coming out dubbed pretty soon. So I'm going to buy that and see how it compares to being dubbed after the second one was. And now what you guys have been waiting for, it's time for my seasonal stuff. Um, I will start with the one holdover from winter season, which is Yo Mushi Petal season three. I watched episodes six through nine. I'm no longer live tweeting through Yo Petal because I really want to marathon it and I want to enjoy it. Yo Petal is a, an anime that I really loved because I could marathon the first two seasons and I really liked it better. I kind of want to yell at my TV and not yell at my Twitter. So I watched episodes six through nine and I was really excited because six through nine has Hakogaku and their fun run which basically was two episodes all about the Hakogaku guys and the third years saying goodbye to their Koheis, their little second years. And it made me cry because I love Jim Pachi Toto. All the ladies love Jim Pachi Toto and he played a really prominent part in this episode. And then they teased Makashima again. Fuck you, yo, Mushi Petal. Don't put Makashima in the opening. Makashima is not going to be in the series. Um, so I really love those episodes. Mito Suji, like, had his race with Naruto, which I'm really pissed off about. Don't even get me started about it. And then the last episode, um, it's basically the new first years and second years doing the first year race for Sohoku. And Onoda was like, started the race and he was super cute with his little kohais and I was like, oh god, it's so cute. Um, but I missed the third years already. They were my favorites and I just, I, I do like the progression that Naruko sort of has the battle cry like Todoroki now. No, Todoroki's from My Hero Academia. The, the big guy, the big bear guy. Um, I like how Naruko's war cry kind of morphed into like a mixture of his and his senpais. And I'm just really looking forward to what the rest of the season has. Now Yo Mushi Petal season 3 is finishing up in the spring season so there's still some of it to go so there's a lot of marathoning for me. Yay! Let's talk about some trash guys. Let's talk about some shoujo trash. So I watched Roommate, the boy version. I watched episode one. This is a short four minute an episode anime on Crunchyroll. It's told in POV style. So basically you, 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 me, I am the apartment manager of this apartment building with three hot guys in it. 
One of them looks like Yusung from Mystic Messenger. One of them is just a regular dude. The other one looks like Sebastian from Black Butler and he's naked all the time. Um, and then that was pretty boring until you get to the last 10 seconds. Now I won't spoil it for you. However, I'm going to wait for 15 seconds for you to go to Crunchyroll, boot up Roommate Episode 1, start it and watch it from 3.45 until the end. Ready? Go. What the fuck was that ending? What the fuck was that ending? What the fuck was that ending? Oh my god. Made me want to watch episode two that was the only thing that made it happen. I also watched episodes one and two of the Dirty Priest anime, which was really the only new anime I was looking forward to this season. Um, I will write the real title in the bottom like I normally do, but I refer to it as the Dirty Priest anime because it's basically all that it is. It's about a girl and she's making out with a dirty priest. The first episode was great. 10 out of 10 with Dirty Priest again. The second episode was censored. <laughs> At least the version I got was censored. Um, and then it turned into a puppet show and then it turned into I don't give a fuck. So I don't know how to feel about this Dirty Priest anime. If you're gonna tote it as a Dirty Priest anime, I don't want any plots, I don't want any flashbacks, I don't want any jokes, I want a Dirty Priest anime. I don't know what it's gonna do. Good luck finding it. Godspeed if you want to waste eight minutes of your life. I also was lucky enough to attend the premiere of Anonymous Noise at Anime Boston, so I got to watch episode one. Anonymous Noise is licensed by Sentai, however it is behind the Anime Strike Amazon paywall, which means I won't be watching it at least until the season's over with because I refuse to pay money on top of my Prime membership for those greedy bastards. Um, but Anonymous Noise is super shoujo trashy. It's about a girl who sings. In her childhood she met this boy. She said, you know, you can always find me by my song or whatever. So I thought it was this first boy. She goes to high school. His name is Yuzu. He's like got the best and biggest eyelashes you'll ever see in your life. Um, and they fight a lot. They're childhood friends. Um, she ends up singing for the band club, which unlike k actually plays music. So that's good. And then um, there's actually another boy named Momo, who it turns out was the boy in the first place she was looking for. It's going to be a shoujo trashy mess. Everybody's really excited about it. I'm super sad that I can't watch it legally until it gets out of this paywall. So I don't know, guys, but the first episode was really great. I highly recommend it if you already get Anime Strike. And then, of course, I watched episodes one and two of Attack on Titan season two and My Hero Academia season two. Uh, let's start with Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan, I can't really mention anything without spoiling season one. And I don't want to really spoil the first episode for you because there are two major things that happen in it that just blew my fucking mind away. This new Titan, though. This new Titan, though, the one at the end. You guys know who I'm talking about, right? Oh, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? And still, I don't understand the thing about the wall. It needs to be explained ASAP before I go insane. My Hero Academia Season 2. I watched the first episode at Anime Boston. I was really not impressed by it, to be quite honest with you, because it was part recap, part boring. However, episode two is a sports festival, which means that for the rest of the season, My Hero Academia is basically a sports anime. You want Gigi to watch something that she's eh on? You turn it into a sports anime. Todoroki is best boy. I'm going to stick by that. Also, in the war between Team Deku and Team Bakugo, Team Bakugo all the way can't front sports anime. I can't wait to see the damn sports anime. <laughs> And that was everything for this video. Let's take a look at my stats if you're playing my home game. So I have a goal to watch 35 anime this year. I've watched 8 out of 35. I have a goal to complete 12 backlog titles this year, which is anime that I have purchased. And I've watched 3 out of 12. Out of the anime that I've completed, 5 of them have been complete series, 3 of them have been completed OVAs, and I've also completed one manga. So those are my stats right now. I'm a little bit behind where I want to be on course, 
but I am primed to finish up Natsuyuki Rendezvous today, so that should add another one onto my backlog and onto my completed titles. So that was everything for this video. What are you watching in the spring season and what should I start watching or should stop watching, aka that Dirty Breeze show? Let me know your thoughts and we'll have a little party down in the comments. I post videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. As always, feel free to follow me on Twitter or my anime list. Major names Anime Palooza at both places. And until next time, love your faces. <laughs>